Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. I consider myself probably a bit more of a, a, a craftsman than anything else, uh, especially if you look at like my pencils and inks. Um, I'll, I'll take a lot of time just kind of working out the details and try to make it all kind of, you know, work together. So, I mean, I, I hope you see some of that in intricacy in some of the work when, when it's, you know, presented like this. Um, I do tend to like doing more organic things. and Sometimes science fiction kind of throws me for a loop, so I try to throw my own little spin on it. But um, growing up in a rural area, I used to find like, you know, animal skulls and stuff like that. And so um, that definitely influences what I do today. I was a staff illustrator for TSR, and uh, St uh, TSR was kind of on the mm, downward spiral, I guess. And uh, Wizards of the Coast came in, purchased them, and uh, I sort of came along with the deal. And shortly thereafter, um, I stayed in the, the, the Illinois, Wisconsin area for a year after that, but uh, I, I called up the art director, who was uh, Matt Wilson at the time, and asked him to do some magic art, and he agreed. And I started there. My first set was uh, Exodus. There's a, a, a tangibility. There's a, a, a tactileness to actually working with oils. Um, it, it's messier, and it's a, it's a lot more complicated. But in the end, you, you, you have this piece that you can look at and, you know, you can show, display, be proud of. Um, but then when you're working digital, it's, it's faster and you can, you know, I wouldn't say cheat, but you can push and pull and move things around. You really can't do in paint, you know. Say like you're, you're working on a, on a head like this and it's the wrong proportion or turned the wrong way. You can grab it, select it, flip it over, make it larger, do whatever you want to. So in, in a sense, you can, you can totally cheat that way. I don't have the original anymore. I sold it a bit ago, but I do have a print here of uh, Unmask. It was from Mercadian Mask, and that was my favorite. I held on to it for a, a long time, and I had like what I thought was a really crazy price on it. And one day, someone goes, well, how much do you want for that? And I said, I want this. And they said, OK. And then I sold it. <laughs> and then I was very sad afterwards. I currently work full time at Big Fish. Um, I'm transitioning sort of my business, I guess, into, you know, selling prints and art and um, making art on the side that I can sort of maintain and keep for myself. So that's probably why I've been doing some of the play mats, the, uh, the, uh, the Mexico City mat with uh, the Avatar of Woe-like figure on it. Um, I own it so I can, I can market and do things with it that uh, I probably couldn't have done before using just strictly magic art. So. Um, I've done like a magic piece here and there. I have a piece coming up, a rare in M14. So just little miscellaneous and random things here and there that just kind of uh, pop into my radar. But um, again, you know, I do travel a lot, so my time is pretty limited on what I, I can and can't do at home. I do understand I have limitations, and I'm not eight people. <laughs> Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. Find everything in the world of Vintage Magic the Gathering at www.vintagemagic.com.